this uh, demonstration video on the compliance features of the Cluedin Data Hub. Now, if I head over to my integrations page, I've plugged in a couple of applications, eight applications here, and that ranges from you know, providers like SQL Server databases, Teradata, SaaS solutions like HubSpot and Salesforce, and some just transaction data that I actually had in a, in a CSV file. So as we uh, search um, through this data, we search for something like uh, Sitecore. You know, I've got an array of different types of data. I've got mail, I've got people, I've got organizations, activity, etc. And when it comes to the, the compliance and, and uh, privacy pieces of the Cluedin Data Hub, we'll head over to our data governance section. Now, our governance section is where we can start to investigate uh, mapping all of the consent that we need for our data. Um, and we can handle all the pieces that you know, surround policies like the GDPR or CCPA or maybe some upcoming um, uh, data privacy acts as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the process of consent. So including, um, we allow you to you know, map the consent against your data. So what properties or columns or, or values that you have in your data need you to be able to prove consent? And one of the first things that Cludin does is when we ingest data, we're actually going off and detecting which properties and columns contain personal information or PII. And we're going to set up default consents for you. So pretty much, you know, things like gender and age and first name, last name, emails, all the kind of classic personal identifiers, they're already mapped for you. But if I'm wanting to do kind of custom consent configuration, um, maybe something that uh, for your particular industry is considered personal information, but maybe not in a kind of standard default uh, PII uh, sense of things, you can go off and you can create brand new consent configurations. And all you need to do is essentially, you know, search for the tool where you're actually getting this uh, data from. So I'm going to select Salesforce. And um, then you get the option of detecting or, or at least setting, you know, the data that we are just about to map. Um, do we require this data uh, for this service to even be used? I.e., if I'm filling in a form on a website and that data will be uh, captured and then placed into our Salesforce CRM, um, you know, if we need, you know, a couple of features like, the first name, last name, etc. If we don't have those, then we can't even really, you know, fulfill the 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 reason why we have that data in the in the Salesforce CRM to, to start with. A good example would be if we're capturing first name, last name, email address, and company on a website to you know sign up for a demonstration. Well, if uh, we don't have consent for the email and uh, and to some degree the first name and last name. Um, then it's really impossible for us to reach out to that person and offer them what they actually ask for. So I'm going to click yes to required uh, to use the service. And I can fill in a short text that indicates to, you know, for, for me as a data processor or a, a data controller in why you're asking for this consent. And let's, so let's use that uh, use case. I uh, need um, personal data to be able to uh, contact this person um, based off their request for a demonstration. Okay, and this is where it becomes really easy because if you've seen some of the other videos included, in, you'll know that as we ingest data in, we essentially build a, a catalog of the properties and, and columns and and, and those types of attributes across all the data sources that we've plugged in. So as soon as we start typing in you know, a particular field, you can see that it's bringing up all the possible kind of mappings of data that we have from our Salesforce account. So if I started to type in something like name, you can say that, okay, well, um, I need to be able to show, let's just, maybe we can do something like first. 
Um, I need to be able to show that I have a consent for mapping uh, data we have maybe on family members. Um, let's just take a couple of random ones. So the creator name of the case. Uh, and let's also take maybe the supplier name and then maybe something around the, um, let's take something that's private, maybe the company that they work for. And we're going to save this consent. So what this does is it adds that consent to the list. As we kind of load more, you can see there's quite a lot of consents that we have here. And here's our Salesforce one right here. And you can see these are the identifiers that we just added that we need to map. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to then say, okay, I can now um, view all of the you know, individuals that have given consent for this particular data. And of course, just because I created this just then, of course, I have no consent. Um, but there are ways for you to be able to manually map this. So for example, if I wanted to manually add an entry for a person for this exchange, it gives us the ability to set different uh, uh, personal or PII data to say that, you know, to capture that we have in some form, whether it's uh, an email or a PDF file or a contractual or captured via uh, um, an online website, um, that we have some way to be able to um, prove that we have that consent. Now, of course, um, the manual approach is, is, is probably not going to scale too well, and that's why we expose this via our API as well. So you can talk directly to uh, our API to enter those consent entries uh, programmatically. Not to mention that also, if you're wanting to have a consent capture form on your website that directly maps into ClueDin, we actually allow you to create those consent forms directly in our platform as well. So now that we have the consent mappings, basically what we have is a way to be able to search through all our data and choose a record. And you know, for all the properties that we have on an individual, we now have a direct binding back to the consent that we required. And, um, and we also have the proof there of saying, once we've mapped in that consent, uh, those consent entries, we can then say, hey, I have the job title of uh, Tim here, and uh, it came from you know, a particular system, and here is a specific consent mapping I have that says why we need to capture this, and here are the individuals that have said yes and no to that consent. So when... Um, Moving on to the other kind of governance pieces, I guess the next one would be breach reports. So breach reports are here to allow you to adhere to this uh, requirement to be able to, you know, uh, uh, send uh, reports of who was uh, uh, who was affected by a data breach of a particular system. So let's just say that this Salesforce uh, account that we have plugged in was compromised. That allows us to go through and then generate a new breach report. And if uh, this may be different in different countries, but for example, you know, in many countries, if we look at the GDPR report, we have to actually send this to a supervisory authority within 72 hours of knowing that this breach happened. And you can imagine that might be very hard to actually do um, in, within 72 hours if you don't have a process uh, set up for this. So let's go through and fill this out. So let's just say um, a Salesforce breach and the description was that um, employee left a Salesforce account open uh, on laptop in public. I'll just fix that spelling mistake. A severity, of course, this allows you to define, you know, the different severity levels. Um, and if you want to find out more about, you know, what the different severity levels are, there's just a link here that you can read more. But essentially something like a personal data leak, that is a critical uh, severity. And then it allows you to actually pick, well, which account that you plugged into Clued In was affected. And I can go off and I can say, well, it was this Salesforce account that we've plugged in. You can then specify the actual date of breach. So this is when you kind of when the Salesforce account was was compromised. So let's just put in a date. 
Um, then we can say the source of the breach, so how the breach happened. Well, very similar to the description up top, we can actually just copy that and, and paste that in here. Um, the contact email, so I'll just put my email in here. The recommendation, so all of these are, are things that are required to send to the supervisory authority. So, you know, what did you do about it? And what we can say is that um, uh, we uh, um, automatically uh, logged all Salesforce accounts out. So from Salesforce, we basically said we forced all accounts to require a new uh, two-factor authentication uh, a login. Um, so the actions taken, well, actually, sorry, that's more the, the actions that were taken, right? I guess for the recommendations would be, you know, what's the recommendation for the people that were affected by this? Because we're just about to generate a report that goes off and tells me who are all the, the people that were affected by this breach. Um, so what, all, what was the personal information that got leaked by this? Um, and uh, so the recommendation would be for these people to contact um, a company uh, to uh, get more details. Right, so that's the actions. So we're going to go off and create this breach report. Now, in a few moments, and you can see I've generated a few here already, but in a few moments, that's going to produce me a report um, that has the list of all people that were in that Salesforce account um, with their contact details that I can, go, if I have them, uh, to go off and actually say, this is what I can send to the supervisory authority. When they ask who was affected by this breach, I can then generate that report very quickly. Now, of course, when it also comes to the, the compliance piece, it also means we, we need to be able to set up proper retention policies. What I find is that most tools don't support retention or setting retention. And, you know, whether it's a SaaS tool, a CRM, whether it's a, a database or, a, a, you know, a custom bespoke system, you know, retention is often not really thought of in a lot of tools. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a retention policy and um, this allows us not only to purge the data from within the clued in platform but it also allows us to purge the data in the source systems as well and there are two ways that we can set up retention policies the first is via queries so this is by um, setting up a kind of how long does data uh, can data stay around for and you can specify a GraphQL query to specify what data is involved in that retention period. Um, we can go over the GraphQL piece in another video. So the final piece I want to show you is, you know, one of the big values of clued in is this, as we integrate data from different systems, um, what we're doing is forming this unified view of records. So this is the same for people and companies, uh, for tasks, mail, notes, etc. And as you can see here, this record here is kind of alluding to the fact that, you know, I have this information on myself and that data has come from multiple different systems. So Cludin has done the work to actually, you know, merge this data from the different integration points that you saw before. And um, just to show you the kind of power of this, if I type in my name here, you could probably imagine as I filter down to people, I really just want one record that's alluding to me. And as you go down the page, you can see that there's no other Tim Wards here. It's, it's all been merged into this one record. So what this means is that if we drill through to this record, we see what we call a unified view. Now here's everything that is connected to myself um, in one single view. Now whether it's, you know, activity or presentations that I wrote or been mentioned in, whether it's a mail that I sent or received that has personal uh, data on me, you know, you've got that full connected view of this uh, individual here. And so when it comes time to actually fulfill the subject access requests and give this individual their data, all we now need to do is head over to our subject access requests, start a new subject access request, now this is just some pre-processing or pre-identification to make sure that we are checking that, you know, does this user who's putting through a request have the right to do it? Um, was this actually done by the individual? Was there proof that this person is actually who they are? 
And once we've checked those off with that uh, individual, we can start to go through and use different identifiers to look that user up. So if we look up this user, we can then choose the most uh, appropriate one, and then we can click Next. Now this is going to go through and it's going to generate me a report that has every single property and piece of data in my business that is connected to this record and is personally identifying. Um, now, sometimes these reports can be quite large. Of course, depending on the amount of data that you have, it means that, um, of course, you have uh, these reports will take a little bit longer. But the, the, the couple of things that are being generated here is that, first of all, it's a PDF report. So this PDF report will be something that we will send to the subject. The next piece is going to be the, uh, the uh, data controller export. So this is a open standard um, uh, version of the data. In our case, you can either choose XML or JSON as this, uh, this um, way to export data. And that is all compressed and, and zipped up so you can send this to another data controller if it's requested. Um, and then after this re uh, request is generated, we're allowed to actually go through and execute some of the kind of mutation uh, uh, actions that we would have uh, to do for this subject access request. So if Tim came back and said, hey, I've got, um, I've got this report um, and you know what, you don't have the right job title for me. Um, or you don't have the right gender or age or address and I'd like you to, to kind of rectify that. So you can see my, my reports generated here and it will go off. This report will be quite large um, because there's a lot of information that it has on me. But you can start to see it's going to show all the personal information that we have, give a breakdown of you know, the data that we have from the different systems. Um, and as we kind of scroll down the page more and more, you can see here's all the links to all of the data that is that contains personal information about this user. So then of course we can we can pick and choose to, to remove certain individual items. We can actually pick and choose if we want to remove I I certain types of data. So we might want to remove all mail. We can do that at a, a kind of a global level. And in this case we can also, as I said before, we can download this report. So this gives me that full export of you know, here are all the files. You can see it's quite large, 4.7 um, megabytes. So this is that uh, that uh, going to contain, you know, all the uh, all the uh, uh, JSON or XML files that I have on this record. So I can look at that a little bit later, or I can uh, approve the report. So I'm going to go through and approve the report, and then it's going to give me the option to actually, you know, send this report. In this case, I won't. And this is where it becomes interesting. The first thing I would want to do is I would want to make sure that I subscribe to new data that comes in that is alluding to this person. So obviously, you know, data doesn't stop flowing. Data is constantly flowing throughout your business. And if we were to find new data in the enterprise uh, during this, um, during this uh, process, I would obviously want to be able to, to be notified and told you need to regenerate this report. So this is also where I can go through and I can start to run the action. So after a few days, if Tim comes back and says, hey, I would, uh, I'd like you to remove my data or I'd like you to minimize the data, it might be, in, and this is the case in most cases, it might be that you just need to change certain values. So let's jump over and click this rectify subjects data. So this jumps us over to the record that we have in question. And let's just say that we had to change Tim's job title. So we're gonna search for that property in the, the full metadata view. And as I go through, I can actually see the history of what are all the values that we have across these different systems for this, uh, for this, uh, for this property or for this, uh, for this uh, piece of data. And let's just say that we got this wrong. We can do a couple of things. We can either anonymize this in place or we could rectify it. So we could go in and we can say, well, this is what we have chosen as the value that we have. It's the latest values as well that we have on this individual. And we might change this to something like CTO. And then we can request a modification. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to go off and it's going to start to generate, you know, what are all the 
the proper, what are all the actions that I need to take once this is in place? And once that uh, process is done, it'll actually end up on this pending changes window. So what this will do is this will allow us to go through and say, okay, well, here is the command that the, the owner of that system needs to, to run to be able to actually rectify that in their source system. So in, if we just have a look at, at an overall view of what we've achieved, in, Cluedin allows us to, of course, integrate the data from the different places. It's going to form the records into a unified view of people and companies for you. Then it's going to allow us to map the consent that we need. Um, and of course, fulfill the, all the parts of the kind of common data privacy acts around generating breach reports, setting up retention, audits, and uh, of course, most importantly, to be able to generate these subject access requests in a very timely manner. So thank you for, for listening.